All right, so this project took me an entire month and I had to cut off part of my CNC machine to make it, do a bazillion test cuts to make things just right. I had some failures and really the salad bowl that I made didn't turn out the way I wanted. So I kind of consider this project a failure and let me explain why. The goal was to make a salad bowl using a couple different woods and having a really deep inlay. So I designed the basic bowl shape in Fusion 360, and that was my first step. I then create a virtual cutter, which would slice vertically through the bowl to give me this unique shape. Doing a direct vertical cut meant, in theory, I could machine it out on my CNC machine because bits can cut vertically really well and really easily. So the big problem is, how can I do such a deep inlay with a bit when the bits can only cut at most an inch and a quarter, maybe an inch and three eighths, and I want to go five inches deep. I decided to solve this by gluing up pieces in one inch thick intervals. One inch is pretty easy to machine. I could create plugs that would fit into the holes with a different type of wood, and then I could layer them all up, aligning with some wood dowels. So with that idea, I decided to do some test pieces to make sure it would all work out correctly. I started off by using some double-sided tape to hold down a small piece of cherry wood, and this is going to come back and bite me in a little bit. I used my Heimer 3D sensor to indicate in the X, Y, and Z of this particular piece, and I machined out the plug shape. I did a roughing pass with a quarter inch spiral upcut bit to remove most of the waste, and then a finish pass with a quarter inch downcut bit. And the theory here is I should be able to get a better finish by doing just a very small pass at the end. The corresponding test hole was also machined out of cherry just because I had some laying around. I used a 3 8 of an inch spiral upcut bit to remove most of the waste. And then I used that same quarter inch downcut bit to do the finishing pass. In theory, using the same bits should have any issues of size uh, kind of cancel out, or so I was hoping. I did a quick test fit by pounding the piece in, and it seemed to fit pretty well. So I went ahead and pounded it out. I put some glue around the edges of both the inside hole and my workpiece just to ensure it has enough glue, and I pounded it back in. But during this process, it cracked the wood. I decided to just go ahead and kind of go with it and clamped it together so I could see how well it would turn out. After the glue dried, I cut off the top piece and sanded it a bit to see if it had any gaps or any issues. It looked like it might have a little bit of a gap, but it didn't seem that big of a deal, and so I thought I'd go ahead with this idea. It basically gave me enough hope to do a full layer and see how that would go. So I glued up some 6-4 cherry using three pieces to get a consistent width. The size of this piece was a full 12 inches by 12 inches and about an inch and a quarter uh, in thickness. I needed a really flat surface to ensure everything would align up. So my first thing I did was to put on the CNC machine and hold it down with some wedges. The wedges would allow me to machine the entire surface without hitting anything. The wedges work pretty well for some light machining, such as this surfacing operation, but I've actually had them come loose when doing aggressive machining. And so I really don't like this technique for anything other than surfacing. So once one side was completely flat, I could take that flat side and put it down on my CNC bed, and now I have a perfect reference surface to machine out the holes. Like before at the test piece, I did a roughing pass and then a finishing pass to create the, all, of the, uh, all, all the holes, all the pockets. Once I had that piece done, I decided to go on and make some of the plugs. Now, my idea for the plugs was to just create one strip of wood, mount it down the CNC machine, and then replicate the same toolpath again and again. In theory, if they're all the same shape, just rotate it, this should work pretty fine. In reality, I had some other issues that I didn't anticipate, which I will talk about in a bit. Since I wanted to machine away most of the wood, I again used double-sided tape to hold down the workpiece. I would push it down really hard with my hands and try and ensure it got a good stick. About three quarters of the way through the cut, I could see it starting to lift up a little bit, and so I had to hit the e-stop and take a look at what's going on. I could pretty easily just pop the whole workpiece off, so the double-sided tape really wasn't doing its job. Now, if you watch some of my other videos, I do use double-sided tape, but
but I always squish it and clamp it together against a piece that uh, allows me to clamp things together. If you're trying to put directly on your CNC table, you really can't get enough force to get the tape to actually adhere well to the table itself. And that's the problem I was having. So I decided to solve that by just using the T-Tracks to make a little ad hoc clamp to kind of pull tension down on it and to get to stick better. So from that point on, machine the plug started to go really well at first, at least until I got to the end where there probably wasn't enough pressure and it started to lift up again. I had to you stop the machine again and go back over to the end and try and clamp it down a little bit better. This technique just wasn't working all that great. But in the end, I had a full set of plugs that could go into my workpiece and see how it goes together. I figured I should test out the plugs to see if they actually fit. And this is this, the same vector shape I took and rotated around. So in theory, each plug should be, or each hole should be exactly the same. This plug was generated from this particular orientation and it fits pretty well right there. But it does not come close to fitting in any of the others. Don't understand why the same vector uh, rotated would not be even close. So my idea of generating the plug separately in one pass, one horizontal pass, is not going to work. I figured the way to solve this problem would be to machine all the plugs out in their corresponding position on one large piece of wood. I started cutting and I realized I made a mistake right away. In my cam post processing of Fusion 360, I accidentally selected the the uh, finishing pass and only ran that. And so here it dived down with a quarter inch uh, down cut bit, did a full inch and a quarter depth cut at full speed. I can't remember what it was, maybe 120 inches per minute, but the bit didn't break. I was incredibly surprised about that. So I eased off the machine and set up the cam to do proper roughing passes, say at a quarter inch deep each pass, which is about the recommended depth of cut for a quarter inch bit like this. And then I could do a full depth cut finishing pass to get it all nice and smooth. Initially I thought I would glue the whole thing in at one time, but then I thought about it a little bit more and realized that might be really difficult to do in case I had trouble pounding it all in. So I decided to take over to the bandsaw and cut out all the individual pieces a bit. I started to glue each piece in, and it was kind of going well. I would just put the glue on the piece itself, pound it in, and it seemed pretty fine until it got to one of the last ones where it actually cracked the wood again as I pounded it in. I figured I'd just go with it though because maybe I could do something with this piece. So I glued it in and clamped around the, the uh, crack and just kind of went with it. Once all the glue was dry, I realized I made another mistake. I meant to have my flat CNC side be completely flat so I could put it back down on the machine, but I had put the uh, plugs in on the wrong side. So that was just another mistake that I made, but that was okay because the piece wasn't too far off and this one was already cracked. So lesson learned. I dropped it down the machine and set it up again with the wedges so I could uh, surface the entire material again. and took just enough off to actually see the uh, pattern come through. Once I had that top piece surfaced, I realized I had more problems. The pieces were just too gappy. I wanted it to be really tight and it wasn't tight enough to my standards. So at this point I was a bit frustrated and really had to go back to the drawing board. I had to do a lot of experimentation and test cuts. I played around with feeds and speeds to generate a better surface finish on some of the plugs. I tried different bits. I ended up using my 3 8 inch spiral upcut bit as it produced better results than my quarter inch bit. I realized I made a mistake in my vectors that I drew in Fusion 360 and they weren't quite straight. This caused a lot of problems with misalignment and was the reason why I couldn't take the same plug and use it in any given location. So after a lot of tests, I started to get things working. I finally started to get five of my one inch thick pieces that looked pretty good and I figured they were ready to glue together. But before I did that, I decided to do a test with two of the pieces that didn't turn out quite right. 
and were a little bit gappy. I glued these guys together, and in Fusion 360, I modeled up a smaller bowl that I could cut out as a test. This is my typical bowl process. I use double-sided tape to hold down the top of the bowl, getting good adhesion by clamping the tape to a little removable spoil board. This little removable spoil board was easy to hold down onto my CNC table at a very specific location. So I machined out the bowl using my typical two bits. The first one is a roughing pass with a 3 8 of an inch spiral upcut bit, and then a quarter inch ball nose bit to do the finishing pass. Now these were just some test pieces, and they had two different vectors for the base shape, and so they had some alignment issues because of that, and I kind of was expecting that to happen. For the test bowl, I decided to use a couple dowel holes and dowels to indicate in the bottom of it. So I drilled those in and drilled some corresponding ones into a piece of MDF. I used the double-sided tape method to hold it down to my mini spoil board, clamping it down like I usually do to get really good adhesion with the double-sided tape. I could then take that and clamp that to my CNC table and machine out the inside of the bowl. Like before, I used a 3 8 of an inch spiral upcut bit to remove most of the waste and a quarter inch ball nose bit to do the finishing pass. So I noticed I had some problems with the test piece and here it is. I had some chip out right on the top of every single little inlaid piece. And I figured it was because of my machining tool pass. Doing a 3D adaptive with a really big pass caused it to aggressively chip it out. I decided to solve this in my final piece, figuring it'd be okay by just doing shallower passes. And we'll see how well that works. So I glued up all my good pieces to get a starting stock piece that was five inches thick. I realized I was gonna have some problems with this. The Simulation in Fusion 360 showed me that the tool was not going to hit any of my bowl, but it was going to go really low. And that's an issue with the Avid CNC, where the Z gantry mount thing will uh, potentially hit the bowl. I decided to go for the simple solution of just trimming it off. Okay, so in Fusion 360, I did some simulations at where it's the deepest cutting, and I could see in the statistics how high it is, so I just jogged a little bit below that to make sure that this would clear it. And it will hit it if I was to machine it right now, but it's gonna actually take away at least that much material before it starts and goes this low. So I think it should clear it. Uh, ideally, it should cut a little bit more off of this or, or drop the spindle. But I think it will work. Pretty nervous about it. We'll see. So at this point, I used my same techniques to mount the bowl onto a little mini spoil board and started cutting out the outside. Again, in the same process as I did before, 3 of an inch spiral upcut bit, followed by a quarter inch ball nose bit. The basic shape I did here is very circular and it could have been done on a lathe. I decided to make the inside a little bit more rigid and something that couldn't be done on a lathe. So as before, I flipped it over and taped it down onto another little mini spoil board, again using dowel holes to align it. So I started the machine and it began cutting, and I quickly realized I had the same problem happen again. I was getting chip out on the top of my inlays. It probably just didn't have enough glue surface area to hold it in really well, and ingrain tends to not glue really well, which is why we don't do butt joints. So the end grain wasn't glued very well and wasn't holding well and just chipped out. I was not very happy about this because it was the whole design of my bowl was to have the pieces go all the way up. So I played around with some tool paths and did a little bit more cutting on that part that chipped out, but ultimately I decided to take it off the table and kind of just hand finish it. So I used my Dremel to trim it out a bit and try and get it to be just to get it to look a little better, I guess. So at this point, I wasn't really happy with the chip out, but I just had to go with it. And I decided to go ahead and finish it. I used Osmo top oil. I put four coats on. The bowl ended up looking OK. Um, like I said, it's just I consider it a failure, though. It didn't work out the way I had planned and the way I wanted. But I don't know. What do you guys think? If you want to try and make it, I can share the Fusion 360 file for you for free. 
can see if you can solve some of the problems that I couldn't. And if you do, let me know how you did. So that's it. Thanks, everyone.